Hola, mi nombre es Jennifer Reynolds y soy la concejala municipal para el Distrito 11 aquí en Lexington. Uh, hoy vamos a tener un episodio de Council Comment acerca del censo de 2020. Yo soy parte de, de una mesa directiva para el censo aquí en Lexington. Es muy importante que todos los residentes de Lexington cuenten en el censo. El censo es un cuestionario que cada casa va a recibir. Uh, va a haber varias formas de contestar al censo por teléfono, por internet o por papel. Uh, las bibliotecas aquí en Lexington van a ayudar a llenar los cuestionarios y el cuestionario es importante porque es algo que uh, nuestro gobierno manda cada 10 años para contar todos todas las personas que viven en una ciudad. Luego la ciudad recibe dinero por parte del gobierno federal para, de, debido a la cantidad de gente uh, que hay. Entonces si no respondemos al censo, uh, no sabemos cuán, cuánta gente vive en Lexington y, y uh, cuántos fondos uh, pudiéramos uh, recibir para ayudar a la ciudad. El dinero que recibimos uh, debido al censo uh, va a cosas para mejorar las calles, las escuelas uh, y, y, muchis, y muchísimas partes de la ciudad. Es muy importante que recibamos este dinero. Entonces, por favor, uh, busca la manera de contestar al censo. Va a haber uh, un comienzo uh, en abril, el primero de abril, y entre abril y mayo uh, va a haber manera de, de contestar. Uh, toda la información que usted va a compartir no va a estar compartido con nadie más, con ninguna agencia del gobierno o fuera del gobierno. Uh, es, es, por ley, uh, nadie puede usar esta información, entonces no necesiten tener temor acerca de compartir uh, las estadísticas de su familia. Uh, voy, a, voy a decir que va a haber un número en la pantalla que ustedes pueden marcar para cualquier pregunta que pueden tener. También pueden marcar a mí uh, en mi oficina uh, o mandarme un email uh, si tienen una pregunta o duda acerca del censo. Otra vez, es muy importante que contesten y uh, gracias por su atención. Why should I care about the 2020 census? Every 10 years, the census counts everyone living in the U.S. Count everyone living with you. Even kids! Our numbers help shape funding and services. For all these things. That's a lot of stuff. Your responses are safe and secure. No matter who you are or where you're from. We have reasons to care. Shape your future. Start here at 2020census.gov. Thanks for joining us. I'm First District Councilman James Brown. I'm Susan Lamb, Councilwoman for the 4th District. My name is Jennifer Reynolds, and I'm the 11th District Council Member, and we are all part of the Complete Count Committee here in Lexington for the 2020 Census. And we encourage everyone to fill out the Census Questionnaire. It's very important for our community. And during this segment, you'll be hearing why it's important for everybody to participate and be counted in our community. Hi, I'm Susan Lamb, council member for the 4th District, and I'm here with Craig Kamak, who is the Community Outreach Liaison in Mayor Linda Gorton's office. Today, we're going to talk about the 2020 Census. So, Craig, what is the purpose of the Census, and how often does it happen? So, the purpose of the Census is to collect information about who lives in our country um, as a whole. How many people are here, um, and what is the kind of the demographic makeup of who lives here. Um, and it is performed every 10 years. 
um, and has mandated in our Constitution. So um, we've had one every decade uh, since our Constitution was passed. You know, the census is important because it tells us how many people live here, which is, of course, very important. Um, and it tells us who lives here as far as ages and genders and race and number of children and things like that. But um, really, the most important aspect that touches everyone individually um, in Lexington is about $675 billion worth of funding from the federal government is um, distributed through the states um, and to local governments based on the numbers we receive in the census. So um, those numbers help determine what streets we can pave and resurface or if we need to widen streets. Um, it helps determine where hospitals may locate upcoming clinics or new hospitals so it impacts your health. Um, schools use it to determine where they need to put new schools and renovate or maybe um, expand schools. Um, so it, it really does impact everyone's life whether they realize it or not so um you know it's important it's you know it's nearly two it's actually over two thousand dollars per person um in funding every year um and that's all determined on how our census numbers are and the more census information we have the better our funding will be what is our local government doing to promote the census in lexington yeah, so it's very important for local governments to be involved with the census. And last year, Mayor Gordon appointed a complete count committee for Lexington. And the purpose of this committee is to bring community members from all across Lexington and all sectors and all areas that you can really think about um, to come together and figure out how do we reach out to all the people in Lexington to let them know about the census and let them know um, what to expect, how to do it, um, what's going to be different for this year. So, um, you know, this committee has, I think, approximately 30 to 50 individuals from across the community, and we've been meeting and working together to figure out how can we reach the specifically communities that um, historically have been undercounted, whether that be, um, you know, undercounting children under the age of five or, um, you know, students at universities not filling out their census forms because they believe that, uh, you know, my parents are in another town, so I belong with them. Um, but you should fill it out wherever you are living for six months or more a year. So students would fill it out for here in Lexington. So, um, so the purpose of this committee is to do that education work um, before everyone gets the census information in their mailboxes. Um, so that's that's what we've been doing. We've been working hard and trying to do as much outreach as possible, and we'll continue to do that um, through mid mid of this year when census is finished. Wow. Who has to complete the census? Every single person should have a census completed. Every person counts. Um, and um, as I said previously, if you live in Lexington six months out of the year, you need to fill out a census. Um, and it's so easy to do. Um, you know, this year, census um, has rolled out a digital format. Um, so you can take it on your phone, your tablet, your computer. Um, if you don't feel comfortable or don't have access to do that, then you can take it um, via telephone call. Um, and if for some reason you don't want to do that, you can do the traditional paper method. So th there's pretty much every aspect available to you to fill out a form, and there's going to be plenty of locations across the city um, to, to do that. Um, the libraries are going to have availability to do census forms. We're going to be holding events throughout the city um, so people understand the importance of it. Because, as I said, again, over $2,000 per person in this city um, accounts for funding that we get to help improve our roads and help prov provide services to everyone in Lexington. So um, everyone counts and we need to make sure that everyone in encourages everybody else to uh, get involved. Absolutely. So when does the census begin? Well, you are going to be getting census information in mail um, probably mid-late March. Um, April 1st is National Census Day, so we'll have a little celebration here in Lexington for that. Um, and then it's, it's go from there. Um, you'll, it'll be as easy as just getting uh, a code that's designated for your home um, and you'll do the census in any of the three different ways. And if for some reason you don't do it, you're going to get people knocking on your door. Um, so it's, I know people just don't like doing that, so get it done. Mm -hmm. It's easy to do and you won't have to worry about people coming door to door saying we need your information. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Craig, for this sure. information today. My pleasure. Is my 2020 census data safe? 
After sending your census response, your personal information is kept safe. By law, it can't be shared with any other government agency, law enforcement, or landlord. No one. So take your 2020 census with peace of mind. Shape your future. Start here. Visit 2020census.gov. Thank you for staying with us. I'm First District Councilman James Brown, and I'm here today with Commissioner Chris Ford. Uh, Commissioner Ford has been appointed chair of the Complete Count Committee by Mayor Linda Gordon. Can you tell us a little bit about what it means to be appointed chair and running that committee? Um, it's been a, a group effort, a team effort. Uh, we've uh, compiled and brought together uh, a diverse uh, membership of leaders across the community and in social services, uh, a lot of relationships that we already have with organizations. Uh, our core team here in City Hall has been a great support to the committee. We've been hard at work for about a year, so uh, I'm okay. delighted to serve in that role and, uh, and glad with the team that we have. Let me, let me ask you this before we get into uh, crunching some of the numbers. Why do you think that you being appointed chair kind of ties into what you're already doing in social services? In social services, it's really about providing needed services and programs to members of our community, underserved members of our community, those most vulnerable. And uh, that's why the census is so important, mm -hmm. uh, to have an accurate, full, and complete count of those that live here in Lexington allows our government to properly plan to provide those services. Uh, and so we feel that it is, it's a natural tie and, for social services to play a role. And I, I agree, I think it makes sense. I think a lot of the folks that we're trying to make sure get counted during the census are, uh, is a population that you currently work with. Now tell us about some of the, the, the populations that are hard to count. I know, we're, I know I've heard about students and right. other, other, other people. That's correct. Well, our committee's work is we want to make sure that uh, every uh, member of each household in Lexington is counted but we're particularly focused on those hard to count populations and those include uh, young children under the age of five. Mm -hmm. Those include our college students and we know we have three uh, higher ed campuses here. Our senior and elderly populations, uh, refugee and immigrant communities and my, uh, communities of color, African Americans and other communities of color. Yeah, I know we, you know, I, I think that's the reason that I signed up and other council members signed up is to make sure that we're doing all we can to make sure everybody gets counted and the reason that's so important is because federal the federal government as well as local governments and state governments base their their funding allocations off of the off of the numbers that they get from the census correct that's correct uh, council member we uh, hope that our census data and we know that Lexington is growing so mm -hmm. we hope our census data will give us an accurate count so we can properly plan for those services census data uh, attributes to the funding that goes towards uh, our schools mm -hmm. Head Start programs uh, our, our roads and infrastructure, uh, hospitals and health care, so many uh, needed services for our community, again, which is growing. We're projected that we're going to grow uh, approximately 9% over the count last year. Uh, just over 320,000 folks live here in Lexington right now. Yeah, and I, and I think that's what gets missed by, a lot of, uh, by people a lot of times. They see the census as something that's evasive, something, something that's, uh, you know, uh, um, I can't think of the word, but uh, kind of invading their privacy. Right. But if we don't know how many people that we're trying to provide services to and the funding's not there, then things get missed. I know when we talk about allocating money for paving, we talk about allocating money for transportation, health care, and even uh, food insecurity uh, programs, that's based on the amount of people that we think are, are needing to be served and are in the area. So it's, it's at the utmost important that, that everyone gets counted. That's correct. And council member also, particularly federal funding. We know here at uh, Urban County Government, we provide uh, a lot of funds to go towards social and human services. We rely on some of the support that state government can provide at this time. Uh, but we also want those federal dollars mm -hmm. to come back here to, to Lexington and Central Kentucky. And so that's why the census is also important. Yeah, in addition to those services that are provided, um, representation is always is also important and it's also based off of the numbers from the census the representatives that you have at the local level the state level and the federal level that representation is based off of the numbers through the census that that is taken in through the census so you know it's at the utmost importance that's right, that's right. so commissioner tell me how hard it is to fill out a census or, or how inconvenient it's going to be for people well it's not going to be inconvenient at all council member we're really excited that the census bureau is modernizing 
the, the count this year, if you will. There's always the traditional mail response. Mm -hmm. uh, there's now a phone response and also an internet response. It only takes a few moments and more importantly, there's no cost. It just takes a few moments of your time to uh, send that information back. And by doing so, you won't also have a follow-up visit from a census taker <laughs> later this summer. So I know yeah. many residents probably would appreciate that. Yeah, so the, so the point you're making is the, the sooner you do it, the sooner you get the census folks off your back. It, it yeah. can, it can yeah. always help. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, time and response is gonna be important to the Bureau and also us here in Lexington. We're really asking folks uh, as quickly as you can. Yeah. Reply. Yeah, I think it's I think it's funny if you try to run from them, you, you're just going to make them chase you. So go ahead and get it done. <laughs> right. So I'll just encourage everyone to go out and uh, fill out the census and be counted and encourage others to do the same. Hi, I'm Jennifer Reynolds. I'm the 11th District Council Member and I want to welcome you back. I'm here today with Danny Rogers from the Census Bureau. And we're here uh, to talk about the census and some concerns that people might have around it. Thanks for coming. Thank you for inviting me, I appreciate it. And what's your official title with the Census Bureau? I'm a partnership specialist with the U.S. Census Bureau, which means that I work with state and local government officials, community leaders, and community members, educating them about the census and helping them understand the impact that it has on them down to a community level. And because I'm on the Complete Count Committee, Lex Count, uh, I have worked with you uh, over the past few months and I've just been really impressed with your work and all that you're doing to try to get everyone counted in Lexington. It takes all of us. Well, um, sometimes uh, when people are thinking about responding to the census, they're concerned about their information being used by the government or being able to be gotten a hold of by other agencies. Uh, what assurance can you give people about their personal information? Well, all of the information is protected by Title 13, which states that any of the information that we collect is stripped of all identifying information. It's all statistics by the time it leaves our department, but nobody from any law enforcement agency, ICE, Homeland Security, nobody's landlord, nobody has access to that information. It's also private for 72 years. That was implemented back in 1978. So for 72 years, nobody can see any personal identifying information like your name, your address, all the things people usually see when you look at old records. Um, so that's gonna be private for 72 years. And one of the most important things to me is that um, anybody who's taken the lifelong oath is subject to a penalty of $250,000 and five years in prison. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to prison for anybody and neither is anybody else who took the oath. So it's very much protected by law. And, and what data then does the government take and use? So we ask nine questions with the decennial census, things like your name, your address, phone number only because if you leave something blank, we wanna call and check and see if you meant to leave it blank. But nothing, you have more information on social media than any of the things that we're asking. And so from that, we take just the statistics and then we use that in people of like state officials, local government officials, business planners, they all use that information to extrapolate that for the more detailed types of um, infographs and things that, that people do with it. So ours is very bare minimum stats, but it's important in making, sh making sure that the $675 billion that's given out every single year is allotted in the, in the proper spaces. And that makes a lot of sense, and, and I know it's reassuring to people. Um, and, and, and maybe uh, in my district, there's people that might be concerned about uh, if ICE or um, other governmental agencies uh, might be able to use their information against them. And uh, everybody needs to be counted whether they're a citizen or not. Right. Um, all residents uh, of, of Lexington uh, need to be counted. But uh, like you just said, you can reassure them that that information will not get to those agencies. Absolutely not. Um, the Constitution says that we have to count everybody every 10 years, everybody living in the United States. That's the stipulation, everybody living in the United States. And so we definitely stick with the Constitution on that. And as far as any other information that, that um, people are afraid of, of giving, the, the beautiful thing about it is that you have the opportunity to do it yourself. So you can do it online, by phone, and by mail on your own starting mid-March through the end of April without anybody coming to knock at your door. So if you're leery, like I am typically, of people knocking at your door, one way to avoid that, do it online, do it by phone, do it by mail, nobody's coming to knock. So you'll get a passcode in the mail, and that passcode is specific to your address, 
You'll go online, use that passcode, and count everybody under the roof. Household can be a little bit misleading. People think, oh, it's just family members. But in actuality, what it is, we want everybody who is living under the roof, whether they're related or not, whatever their the relationship may be, everybody living under that roof is who needs to be counted on that form. Mm -hmm. And then you do that between mid-March and the end of April, nobody comes knocking. Very good. And I, I think it's um, important for our minority uh, communities to understand that they uh, need an accurate representation so that when, as a city, we're looking at numbers for you know how many uh, people we have and the different demographics, that they need to be accurately rep represented. And if people don't participate in the census, we don't have those numbers. We don't know um, our Latino population. Uh, we don't know um, our population from other countries, um, our refugees. Um, and people that are here working, uh, all these different communities uh, won't get counted. Um, and, and we won't know how they're represented in our, in our city unless they participate in the census. So uh, it's very important to get counted. And I'm so glad that there's now three ways to take it. Uh, in the past 10 years, the Census Bureau has come a long way in Absolutely. making sure that there's various options uh, to participate and to take it. Uh, we also know that those online and phone versions are available in more languages than just English. Is that right? Right. So um, outside of English, we have 12 other languages that the, that the online, by phone and by mail options are going to be available in. So you think of your Mandarin, your Cantonese for Chinese, your Korean, Japanese, uh, Haitian Creole, French, those types of languages are going to be available. But there will be 59 other languages that will have language guides. So um, even though it's not available by phone or by mail or online, um, you can go online and find step-by-step -step guides on how to get through um, the census questions in those other languages. That's wonderful. Um, I'm glad that it's so inclusive. Uh, so what, what is, if you could just say one thing to people <coughs> about maybe their concerns in taking the census, uh, what, what would you say? The, the basis is <clears throat> the census is easy, it's important, and it's safe. Um, these are things that affect all of us. So <clears throat> even if you don't care about some of the programs that the $675 billion goes to for the next 10 years, if you don't like potholes, it works for you. You need to make sure that you are um, <clears throat> letting people know that you exist for the census so that we can fill in those potholes. We also want to make sure that people understand that this all comes down to what you need in your community. Everybody's using the same resources, mm -hmm. but if we don't get counted, then a lot of the programming for schools, a lot of the things that kids need within those schools aren't going to be taken care of because we need to know that kids exist, we need to know that different demographics exist, so that specific programming can be had um, with the money that's, that's given out. Thank you so much for joining us today, Danny. Thank I really appreciate it and the work that you're doing. And I just would like to remind everyone that here in Lexington, you count, I count, and we all count. Thanks for tuning in. What is the 2020 census? Every 10 years, the census records everyone living in this country. It's written in the Constitution and comes in a questionnaire that counts everyone who lives at your address on April 1st. The data can be used to inform funding for services like fire stations, schools, clinics, and representation that affect your community. How will 2020 census data be used? Where there are more people, there are more needs for public services. That's why the census is used by the government to inform funding decisions each year. But that's not all. It's also used by nonprofits to inform services, by businesses to create jobs, and even by students for school projects. Understanding how the population changes helps us shape communities across the country for the better. How does the 2020 census affect representation? There are 435 seats in the House of Representatives. These get distributed to the 50 states by population and an accurate census response helps your state get the right amount of seats. States with smaller populations get at least one, while states with larger populations might get more. How do I take the 2020 census? 
In March 2020, every address in the country will receive an invitation to complete a simple questionnaire. And there are three ways to respond. Number one, do it online. Number two, call by phone. Number three, send it by mail. For those who don't respond, a census taker from your community will follow up and assist you. Is my 2020 census data safe? After sending your census response, your personal information is kept safe. By law, it can't be shared with any other government agency, law enforcement, or landlord. No one. So take your 2020 census with peace of mind. Shape your future. Start here. Visit 2020census.gov.